Purdue, fresh value chicken thighs or drumsticks, $1.99 per pound. Golden Rye Pineapple, just $4.99 each, saving $3. Thai 2X Laundry Detergent, only $24.99 for a 92-ounce bottle. You save $2.06. ShopRite Shredded Cheese, just $2.99 for an 8-ounce package. Match Light Charcoal, only $7.99 for a 3.1-pound bag. You save $3.06. Visit our website at www.marketplace.pm for more weekly specials. You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Tuesday, April 16th, 2019. I'm Diane Brewer, and thank you for joining us. More headaches for parents of TN Tatum students who were briefed on the temporary relocation plan. The Ministry of Education made the decision to keep TN Tatum doors closed for the school term while environmental assessments are carried out at the troubled building in Warwick. Among some of the concerns expressed to the Education Ministry are their lack of consultation with parents and the upcoming exams for M3 students. 183 students of Tian Tatum Middle School are in the process of being relocated to other middle schools around the island. The temporary measure was put in place while the suspected mold case at the building undergoes further health checks. Since last week, the students have been separated by year level and sent to nearby schools. Parents were invited to a meeting with the ministry yesterday to discuss the plan and were told just under 50 parents showed up. This was much to the ire of the PTSA president, who was said to be frustrated by parents' poor attendance. The majority of students will report to Sands Middle School on Wednesday. Seven students are asked to report to Delwood Middle School in Pembroke, and the remaining 60 or so students will report to Whitney Middle School in Flats. Parents are very concerned about the lack of preparation by the ministry and the lack of parental consultation, especially given that students are expected to sit their Cambridge assessments soon. They feel students are considerably disadvantaged. Parents also feel that little consideration has been given to students who are going to be separated from friends and familiar surroundings. A source at the Bermuda Union of Teachers says there are genuine concerns about how students will cope with being split up as the school very much functions as a family unit. Some parents are even worried about the safety of their children who will be relocated to schools that are, quote, dangerous to some students. In a letter addressed to parents today, Principal Garita Coddington answered some of the frequently asked questions about the relocation plan. Responding to concerns about the emotional well-being of students during the readjustment, she said students and staff at each respective school have prepared to give warm welcomes to the incoming students. TN Tatum teachers and student services staff will move with them. Tatum security members will also be assigned to Sands and Whitney. Talks on transportation are still ongoing, and in the meantime, students are encouraged to take public buses to their assigned school. All belongings left behind at the TN Tatum building will remain there until the ministry has been given the all clear by the health and safety officer. Jasmine Patterson reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Jasmine. Meanwhile, Education Minister Diallo Rabain sought to explain the reason it appeared there was no consultation with parents as to where their children would be relocated. I think it's really important for us to understand the time frame that we're working with. When the teacher, the health and safety coordinator, and the PTSA president met with us last Tuesday afternoon, it was explained to them then, and they had the responsibility to take back to the various circles, that if the teacher came back, we would inspect the building with the health and safety officer, with them, but if they came back and still said that they were not to go back into the school, the only other option that we had was that we would have to reassign the students to schools. Uh, subsequently, they did come back and we met on Thursday morning after they had met with the health and safety officer. They gave the same letter to us that said, we won't go back into the school until the department agrees to air quality testing. And so we told them, if that is the case, we will agree to the air quality testing but we will have to relocate the students by next week. The reason we would have to relocate them by next week is because we're looking out for our primary school students. Our primary school students started sitting their checkpoint exams this week. We couldn't have the students remain at the schools while that went on, so we had to relocate them. We knew there was going to be some people that would be upset with the various placings, but that will 
move the students to various schools based on their address and where they live as close as possible so we could ensure that the students were not moving far away from where they would normally be going to school. It was an incredible effort because it was pulled off in less than a week uh, that we were able to do that. But some things that I would have liked to have had happen, I like to talk to the parents and give them the idea of what we were doing, just couldn't happen within that short period. And that is why we arranged a meeting yesterday. So we can tell them what was going on. From our perspective, it was hoped that when we spoke to their representatives, they would have passed the message on because it was very clear when we left that meeting with the PTSA president, with the health and safety coordinator for the school and the deputy principal that come the following week, as in this week, we would have to relocate the students. Coming up, an appeal for a second motorcyclist in the fatal crash of Antoine Seaman. Concerns over math results, the latest weather news, and so much more. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, come out for an evening of old school soul. My Bermuda friends, I am Otis Redding III. Thursday, April 18th, the night before Good Friday, come for an evening with me at the Earl Cameron Theater in City Hall. Backed by the one and only Wall Street Band. April 18th, enjoy songstress Olivia Hamilton, soul singer Vance Goder, and Otis Redding III on the City Hall stage, performing some of your favorites. Thursday, April 18th, Reserve your seat now on ptix.bn and join us for an unforgettable night. Yukon Gold Potatoes, $4.99 for a five pound bag. Don't forget your codfish for your fish cakes, only $5.99 for a 16 ounce package. Great for Easter Sunday, stovetop stuffing, just $3.29 for a six ounce box. Trappy Sugary Sam Sweet Potatoes, only $1.99 for a 15 ounce tin. Robin Hood Bread and Roll Mix for your Easter baking, just $3.69 for a three pound bag. Have a safe Good Friday and a happy Easter from the Marketplace. Get ready box, cloud DVR storage, more local channels on every device in your home. Get more with Fiber Wire TV. Welcome back. Police are seeking a second motorcyclist who may have been present during the collision yesterday that claimed the life of 21-year-old Antoine Seaman. Mr. Seaman died after a collision involving a police vehicle around 1.50 a.m. Monday morning on Somerset Road in Sands near the junction with Wilson Place. The investigating officer, Sergeant Dorian Astwood of the Rhodes Policing Unit, is renewing the appeal for witnesses as well as anyone who can help identify the last movements of Mr. Seaman between 11 p.m. Sunday Sunday until his death. In particular, police would like to speak with a second motorcyclist who was riding with Mr. Seaman and would have likely have been present at the time of the fatal collision. The rider and anyone with information is asked to contact Sergeant Dorian Aspwood on 247-1009 or 717-0849 at the earliest opportunity. And yet another traffic collision this morning in Bermuda and again later this afternoon. Police were quick to the scene and people came to assist in the, with the wreckage. Maya Palacio has more. Today, around 11.40 a.m., police officers responded to a single vehicle crash on South Road in Paget near the junction with the South Coat Road. Many bystanders were quick to help remove the vehicle from the road. The Bermuda Police Service says, quote, It appears that a car being driven in westbound lane of South Road struck a curb in the vicinity of South Coat Road and overturned. The driver, said to be a 45-year-old St. George's man, apparently sustained abrasions to his arm and declined medical treatment at the scene. The damaged vehicle was later towed away. Any witnesses are asked to call the main police telephone number 295-0011, end quote. There was a lot of heavy traffic that was in the way as well, being backed up on each end. And then, around 3.30 this afternoon, there was yet another crash involving two cars on Middle Road. Police again reported to the scenes, traffic again was backed up, and it appears that no one involved was seriously injured. For the Bermuda Broadcasting News, 
I'm Maya Palacio. In other news, less than pleasing math results has prompted educators at Harrington Sound Primary School to seek outside help. The Parent Teachers Association sought the support of UK-based Primal Academic Innovations, which has implemented the Math Mastery Program at the school. The school's PTA and maths educators were concerned with students underperforming in the P6 Cambridge Math Checkpoint exam. Students were scoring on average a 1.8 to 2 points, well below the UK average. The leadership approached the PTA to secure funding for a new initiative with regards to Mr. Unwin Barron coming on board. Um, and we essentially wrote a grant to the Bank of Bermuda Foundation. We also forwarded that grant to the Bermuda Community Foundation and um, thankfully enough they both came through with regards to funding this initiative. Adam Erinberry, in partnership with the Bermuda Education Council, has overseen the Maths Mastery Project at the school since September, affecting 233 students. Pupils were, were often learning maths and then forgetting maths. And so we, they may have been taught it and they may have done it, but longer term that wasn't always accessible. So part of the strategy to improve standards was to represent it, to make sense of it for children through um, using manipulatives and using specific questioning to support the kids in understanding it so they'll retain it over the longer term. On top of providing funding, 13 volunteers from Deloitte show up at the school every Tuesday who have been trained in the math mastery curriculum to work alongside teachers and support students in need of tutoring. This isn't something that addresses a Bermudan issue. It's something that addresses a maths learning issue worldwide. And it's been evident in some of your larger education communities. The program is designed to activate certain parts of the brain that deal with understanding and learning rather than memory. So the children like the idea, especially using the bar modeling method, where they have to show and prove the answers as opposed to just rote demonstrations of doing things. And we find that it stays with them. Um, Mr. Unenberg has been a godsend. He has done a tremendous job. Also a big thank you to Deloitte for what they have done for us. And right now the children are really, really enjoying math. Now parents, teachers and students themselves appear more confident in the upcoming exam results. People who are enumerate have an increased chance of going to prison um, than, in, than if they're illiterate. And similarly, um, the, the lack of numeracy has a massive issue in um, future success and, and, and choices in life. So I think in terms of the, the wider community, I think the uh, focus on developing numeracy skills and, and confidence in maths is important. It is the hope the pilot program will generate new high standards for students that can be duplicated at other schools, building confidence in the overall public school system. Jasmine Patterson reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Turning to weather news, lots of spring sunshine, and it looks like it will hopefully continue for our Good Friday and Easter holidays. Let's go to AccuWeather headquarters for an update. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. This AccuWeather forecast here on ZBM is brought to us by the folks at the BFNM Insurance Group. We have a pretty nice weather pattern setting up shop here as uh, there is our one little tiny shower that uh, at least the satellites uh, were able to uh, estimate uh, earlier this afternoon. Well to the south, we're in better shape out there. Uh, as a front pushes off to the east, you can see that well-defined batch of clouds, a stripe of clouds off to the southeast, and we're going to deal with a nicer setup here as high pressure takes over from the north. We're in the upper 60s, 69 degrees across most of the area. Humid Humidity is around 65%. Pretty good little breeze still from the north at 13 knots. Water temperatures at 72 degrees. And on the inside, we have one to three foot waves. But on the outside, we're still dealing with six to nine foot wave heights. And that is going to lead the uh, Bermuda Weather Service to hold on to the small craft warning through tonight. Then things will improve later this week. Uh, Thursday especially looks like a great day on the boat, but tomorrow will be better as well. Uh, so the tide is coming up, and high tide will occur at 7.06, low tide at 1.23 tonight. Uh, high tide again at 7.33 a.m., and uh, low tide 1.53 on Wednesday afternoon. So we're not in bad shape out there. We are going to be dealing with a moonlit sky, lighter winds late tonight, 61 degrees for your low. Tomorrow, lots of sunshine. In fact, more sunshine than clouds will be around 70 degrees for the next few days. It'll be a very nice weather pattern. Uh, so our front, this uh, area where the winds are kind of converging, that's moving away. And high pressure is going to strengthen over the next couple of days. Uh, so uh, we're in pretty good shape here with the shower staying a couple hundred miles to our south. Uh, into Wednesday and Thursday, still 
Nice weather. High pressure will generally be off to our north by the time we get into Thursday, with this the most dominant feature in the northwestern Atlantic. The winds will become a little more active uh, as uh, time progresses into the beginning of the weekend, so boating conditions improve, then they begin to get a little choppier with some swells coming in uh, into the weekend. Down into the Caribbean we go with some scattered showers here and there into Jamaica and Barbados, even Trinidad and Tobago seeing a few showers. No tropical threats at this point. And the gateway forecast will take us into some wet weather in Toronto with a high of around 53 there. That's about, say, uh, 11 and a half degrees Celsius. New York City, 60. Boston, 58. No complaints there. Nice weather. 81 in Atlanta. We're warming up. A nice, steady warming trend through midweek here into Atlanta. Miami, 82 degrees. And in London, we're dealing with some showers and some spring-like temperatures right around 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and that'll put you into the mid-teens uh, to upper teens Celsius. As we uh, take a look at the five-day forecast here, uh, we're dealing with readings uh, around 70 for Wednesday and for Thursday, 71 Friday. Uh, and again, boating conditions improve into Thursday. Then they begin to, to deteriorate as a south wind picks up. The south wind is going to drive temperatures up, but it will also reintroduce some larger waves into Saturday and on Sunday. So we're going to send it back to you. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your evening. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. And you're watching the Tuesday edition of Bermuda Tonight. Well, he spent 18 years in the media spotlight bringing the public crucial information from the police service, sometimes in front of the lenses of an unfriendly news media. And now Dwayne Keynes, the popular police media and public relations manager, is about to say goodbye to the police service and start a new chapter as the chief operating officer of the city of Hamilton. Troy Trot sat down with Mr. Keynes to reflect on his very eventful career in the public eye. Mention the police and the media, and one man always comes to the surface. Attended a report of an incident. Now that incident took place on North Shore Road. In a few weeks' time, Dwayne Keynes, the longtime police public and media relations manager who has been at the center of broadcast news coverage involving the police, will become the chief operating officer of the city of Hamilton. Hamilton Mayor Charles Gosling, in announcing his selection, said the COO role is a demanding position that requires a strong command of the law and broad communication skills and effective leadership ability. He praised Mr. Keynes for his numerous contributions to the Bermuda Police Service and predicted he will be an asset for the city. You're about to be Chief Operating Officer of the City of Hamilton. Some would say that's a very daunting task. I think it's a beautiful opportunity to assist Bermuda. Again, as a community servant, I'm always looking for ways to engage in my country, in my community, to make it better. The city of Hamilton, the corporation of Hamilton, in fact, is one of those uh, communities that have always been active in change within the island. Asked to weigh in on some of the highlights of his long career, Mr. Keynes told us. One of the highlights certainly was being a part of the team that brought back the Jim Connor and Police Week. Certainly anything that gave me an opportunity to fuse what we do with the Bermuda Police Service and the public. That has always been something that I've taken pride and joy in. I love people. I love my community. So anytime we get to engage. Now the two groups that have a particularly uh, dear place in my heart has always been seniors and young people. But when it comes to his relationship with reporters for the island's various news media outlets, the media don admits emotions can be tense at times. I've made a lot of friends in the media. As you can imagine, you see these guys sometimes more than you see your family. And it's a love-hate relationship at times. Sometimes the media are best friends, and sometimes they can feel like the worst enemy. So I've made a tremendous amount of friends. I've grown as a person. I've now have a supreme respect and understanding for the role that the media play in keeping Bermuda balanced and keeping Bermuda alert to the things that are developing in the community. The media is necessary to keep government and governmental agencies honest. They are part of the democratic checks and balances system. He may not be in the job yet, 
However, he is already thinking of how he will hit the ground running when he assumes the COO role next month. My first goal with the Corporation of Hamilton is see what I can do to enhance the brand that they already have. It is a vibrant and a very engaged entity within the city, and my job is to see what we can do to make them operate better. Although Mr. Keynes is leaving the Bermuda Police Service, he is still full of praise of the men and women he has worked with. I've had the honor of working with 425 members of police and 100 support staff, and of course, I could not do what I do effectively of them. And specifically, one person I could never forget would be Robin Simmons, who have had the honor to work side by side for some 18 years. Those thoughts and feelings, no doubt, reciprocated. Tarai Trot reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. And the best of luck to Dwayne Keynes. Well, Earl Baisden will have the latest in sports news in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. Welcome. Welcome to World Triathlon Festival Weekend. See you at the Sunday Shopping Festival on April 28th. Sunday is the new Saturday. Enter to win a shopping spree or a travel voucher. World Triathlon Festival Weekend. There's something for everyone. The Marketplace Food Court is you and your family's one-stop shop. Start your day at the breakfast bar with omelets made to order and traditional Bermuda codfish breakfast. The chefs will cook lunch and dinner to your liking. Along with the salad bar, sandwich bar, sushi bar, and fruit bar, the Marketplace Food Court is your kitchen away from home. Every day is hassle-free with nutritious meals from the Marketplace Food Court. Visit us seven days a week. Homemade cooking, quality service, all at prices you can count on. There are many great reasons to consider buying a Kia or Toyota electric car from Bermuda Motors. Here are the top five. You'll be pleasantly surprised how much money you save over filling up a traditional gas car at the pumps. Plus, electric cars are quick and easy to charge. You'll be impressed by the smooth, quiet acceleration and comfortable ride of an electric car. In Bermuda, there's no such thing as range anxiety. With an electric car, you can typically drive more than 100 miles over several days without having to recharge. Electric cars need very little maintenance. They don't require an oil change, spark plugs, or tune-up, and there's no transmission or exhaust system to repair. Electric cars are awesome for the environment. They dramatically reduce harmful emissions and don't pollute our island's clean, fresh air. Choose an all-electric Kia Soul or the hybrid Kia Nero or Toyota Prius C from Bermuda Motors. Box, cloud DVR storage, more local channels on every device in your home. Get more with Fiber Wire TV. Turning to sports now, Daniel Phillips continues his impressive run in the Rafael Nadal tennis tournament in Barcelona. Adaptive learning students compete in the track meet at the National Sports Center, and the Bermuda Football Association announced their end-of-season awards and a special guest. Earl Basin has the details and so much more in tonight's sports report. Daniel Phillips continued competing in the Rafa Nadal Tour under 14 tennis tournament in Barcelona. Phillips is now playing in the final round of the tournament, having advanced from the group stage. In his first round final match, Phillips defeated Naim Benito Fernandez in straight sets 6 1 6 1. Staying with tennis news, the Bermuda Breeze Championship got underway at the Coral Beach and Tennis Club yesterday. Only four matches took place on the opening day of the tournament that sees players aged 40 and over compete. In the men's four 40 singles round robin, Michael Toyer defeated Jim Humber, 6-love, six 6-love. Six In men's 70 doubles quarterfinal action, Robin Blackburn and Gary Shafat defeated Leslie Crane and James Watlington, 6-3, six 6-2. Six On the heels of the success recently of the Bermuda Special Olympians, over 100 athletes with adapted learning abilities took to the National Sports Center track yesterday to compete. Sports Director of Bermuda Special Olympics, Ricky Watts, tells us what all the excitement was about at the track. Well, uh, every year we have uh, what we call our invitational games. It's uh, put on by Cedarbridge Academy and our Adaptive Physical Education Department for the Ministry of Education. And what we've done is we brought all the schools that have... Uh, 
uh, intellectual disabilities of students in their rooms and also our outside agencies. We bring them together and we have a huge track and field meet. This is the what I would call the gala of the track and field because we have a great time. We have athletes from every school, primary, middle school, high school uh, in the country of Bermuda that are participating with intellectual disabilities. And we have the same track and field like 100 meter dash, 200 meter dash. It was outstanding. We had our first four by 100 meter relay today. And let me tell you something, great day, great race. It was awesome. While Trey Simons competed in the Gamecock Invitational Outdoor Track Meet in South Carolina. Competing in the men's 800 meter race, Simons finished eighth with a time of 153.12. Bermuda Football Association President Mark Wade held a press conference inside the Clyde Best Center of Excellence boardroom to announce end of season celebrations and a special guest. As you know, every year we uh, host an end of season symposium. Um, this year we decided to just change the format a little bit in that um, we're going to have an end of season review meeting um, on the, the Wednesday before. And uh, the symposium is going to be um, a standalone event where this year our special guest is Shaka Hislop, who um, fans will remember him from um, Trinidad fame um, as well as um, Newcastle in, in the UK. Um, <clears throat> and more recently, his exploits on um, ESPN. So we're very excited to have um, Shaka as a special guest. At the symposium, <clears throat> we will have uh, a panel discussion with our um, national team coaches and, and some, of, some players. Two athletes competed in the Boston Marathon under the Bermuda flag. Allison Paddy finished 12,878th overall after clocking a time of 3 hours, 43 minutes, and 59 seconds. Anna Laura Hocking finished with a time of 3 hours, 52 minutes, and 45 seconds. She was 15,149th overall. The 2019 Bermuda Comic Clash race season got underway off the West End Sailboat Club. The duo of Maxwell Curtis and Wesley Tucker won the midwinter regatta with three wins in the three races on the day. Gladwin Lambert and his crew Ross Smith finished second with seven points, while Quentin Simons and Greg Proctor finished third with eight points. A total of 262 points were scored on Saturday night as the Bermuda Basketball League continued inside the Summersfield Academy Gymnasium. Game 1 saw the Smith Court Kings defeat the St. George's Hoop Stars 73-56. Christian Fiddick led the Smith Court Kings to victory with 19 points. He had one rebound and one block shot, while Kanik Wilson scored 19 points for the St. George's Hoop Stars. He also had five rebounds, four assists, nine steals, and one block shot. Game 2 needed overtime to decide a winner as the Hamilton City Twisters defeated the War Grimrock. 68 to 65. Are you a drone operator? Did you know there are now three no fly zones in Bermuda? These include LF Wade International Airport, Police Headquarters in Prospect, and Westgate Correctional Facility. These no fly zones have been created for everyone's safety and security. Any person who breaks these laws commits a punishable offense and may be prosecuted. Find out more at bcaa.bm. Wednesday, the 24th of April, Michael Ramsden returns to Bermuda, accompanied by fellow Christian apologists Alicia Wood and Vince Vitale, also of the Rabbi Zacharias International Ministries. Once again, we tackle the mysteries and misconceptions arising from the Christian worldview. Has Christianity failed? Where is God in suffering? And why believe in fairy tales? Plan to attend this fascinating forum at the Mid-Ocean Amphitheater on the 24th of April at 7.30. Free tickets at ptix.bm. Welcome to Furniture Walk. At Furniture Walk, we have one of the island's widest selections of top brand home furnishings. Including Stearns & Foster, Craftmaster, Natupsi, Universal, Bassett, and many more. Whether you're freshening up your living room or remodeling your entire home, we have all the brands and top quality furnishings you'll need. We also offer in-house financing. 
can't find what you're looking for in store? No problem! We can special order it for you. Our website has an even larger selection of the world's best furniture. Stop by our Paget store and we'll be happy to help you get on your way to finding the perfect selection for your home or office. Furniture Walk, furnishing Bermuda's homes for over 30 years. I'm Tony Waterman, coming up on The Breakdown this week. $250 billion. That's a conservative estimate on how much excessive alcohol use costs the U.S. economy every single year. We'll explore how much of an economic drain drinking is in Bermuda. And if you thought moderate drinking was okay, think again. A recent study shows a bottle of wine is equivalent to smoking up to 10 cigarettes when it comes to your cancer risk. Plus, par for the course. A look at how team sports could drive a tourism boom in the winter months. That's Thursday at 8 p.m. on ZBM TV9. That's our newscast. I'm Diane Brewer. Good night. On the CBS Evening News this Tuesday, a vow to rebuild Notre Dame within five years. We are in Paris with details on the plan and the inside story of the artifacts recovered. Authorities are still trying to piece together.